the the perspective that you'll probably hear from me is a little bit different, and it's definitely vendor. Uh, you know, tell it's an Esri story. It's not it's it's not intended to be an open standards story, but I do address open standards. So, just so that everybody knows me, I've I've been in geospatial for us uh, almost twenty five years. Um, I have spent time at Autodesk as the digital cities product lead. Um, I've been in AEC utilities three D for for about the last 15 years and um and i I've, I've been primarily on the tool vendor side after uh, about 10 years originally in enterprise consulting so i i tend to think about things from the perspective of what is it that users need to get done with the, the tooling that i'm helping to create uh our perspective is that that you know we have a market that goes back you know some of our customers go back to the the early 80s um or even before um what we are trying to communicate to them is that the the world and the way that we can analyze and interact with the world is really transforming into a situation where you can abstract just about any real world system into high value digital assets for models um, and this is true for natural systems facilities and structures and networks and cities and conurbations and so of course the the digital twin world where it is what has been adopted out of the manufacturing industry to start to describe these these abstracted digital representations of the real world so for you know, jack and and team we, we've discuss this quite a bit. Our perspective is that digital twins are virtual representations of the real world, uh, including physical objects, processes, relationships, and behaviors. GIS can be used to create digital twins of the natural and built environment, and it uniquely integrates many types of digital representations or models. So we see GIS as a technology that can bring together multiple systems or multiple digital twins. Uh, GIS uh, through location is often involved in key aspects of actually creating and working with digital twins. So certainly it's involved with data capture and integration, real time visualization, analysis, and then sharing and collaboration. Many of our users are coming to us because Esri has a broad capability now around kind of engagement and systems of engagement to actually take information that's being processed in something like a, a, a digital twin or a series of data models and actually communicate that outward to large communities. Um, we see that um, we, we don't think that there is one digital twin for San Francisco, for example, or for uh, for for Florida Power and Light. We you know we we believe that they there are multiple representations that n need to be brought together and uh, and have certain inputs that that can then lead to the 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 buzzword business uh, bingo that everybody is looking for around increasing decision confidence, um, increasing process optimization, decreasing risk, all that kind of thing. So what we are really focused on is the system of systems uh, perspective on bringing together data types, data models, um, different analyses to enable customers to accomplish their business objectives. Uh, I'll go through these pretty quickly. So GIS technology is involved in in data capture and integration uh, all the way from from actual reality capture, um, mesh and point cloud generation from photogrammetry, and then certainly over on the other side to uh, GIS has been used deeply in enterprise and data integration for decades. Uh, please go forward. Uh, GIS enables uh, dynamic visualization experiences. This has been getting better and better all the time. I've been pushing hard on this for the last five, six years at Esri, and we're seeing customers uh, do some fantastic things, such as the 5D visualizer that was created by HNTB up there in the middle. Um, we see GIS visualization as a, as a critical part of, uh, of the digital twin story. Uh, GIS supports sharing and collaboration. Um, we, you know, everything from story maps to dashboards um, are required to to allow our customers to communicate outward the the reason, you know, the reasons why or the benefits from their really expensive IT implementations, including things like digital twin implementations. And then we certainly see that um, that there is a tremendous amount of potential uh, to use GIS and location to 
transform analysis workflows across very large systems and organizations. And, and I won't go into this too much more. I'm sure you are all familiar with the terminology here. So, so to pull back from it, of course, as a tool vendor, we have a, a wide variety of products that uh, that are everything from open source. We're actually in the top 50 uh, commercial open source contributors globally in GitHub uh, to uh, to to packaged tailored workflows for different uh, users such as urban planners. And what we say is that ArcGIS in general supports the creation and and integration of literally thousands of different digital representations of real world systems uh, into digital twins. Um, so just to step back a little bit, uh, the problems that we actually hear from customers that digital twins solve are actually a little bit bigger than what I've uh, than what I think I've seen uh, this group talk about in the two meetings that I've been there. So we definitely see some customers asking for uh, digital twins as a historic record or baseline and that that in some cases it's a starting point but in some cases it's actually a legal record that that ends up archived and fixed in time um, we we certainly see the uh, i'll just say kind of the microsoft case where microsoft is heavily buying into the idea that that every digital twin is is real-time iot integrated and is that synchronized digital representation of some real world system. We we absolutely agree that that is one of the the uses of a digital twin is to use it for operational performance monitoring and and even uh, live performance optimization. We also hear from some customers though that if we just stop at the performance monitoring story that that we're not telling the story they need to hear, which is you know Neom does not exist yet. They want a digital twin that they can use to simulate and predict the future of this city that that you know is still largely just uh, uh, you know the beginnings of a construction site. So we also hear that some customers want to use digital twins for texting and, and predicting future outcomes. And interestingly, that is really what digital twins in the manufacturing industry were originally for. They were for optimizing the manufacture and then eventual performance of, of stuff that was being built. So, so it's it's interesting to hear in this kind of BIM oriented market that that actually it, the the term digital twin and this is certainly my opinion has been been brought into something that's actually a little bit different from what it was originally designed to be in, or, or thought of in the, uh, the manufacturing industry. Um, this I will simply sum up by saying, and I think it was shown well in Casey's slide, is that our customers need to realize that digital twin implementations are complex IT implementations. And so everything that I used to have to go through when I was in enterprise integration needs to be applied to a, a digital twin project today. And I, I liked the, the the statement that, you know, it's hard enough to build one. Let's not worry about many. Uh, I agree with that. I will say, though, that you know, cities are you know, in, in many cases. I'll use that old uh, analogy of in, in many cases, we're kind of assembling the digital twins in flight, right? So so um, what you'll find in large, large uh, customer organizations is that there will be multiple digital twins arising in different parts of the, the organization. S open standards are a critical part of uh, of digital twins. Um, and I, I don't recall who said it earlier on the call, but it, it, it has to be about more than just one standard organization's standards. Um, we see everything from community kind of de facto standards to uh, to proprietary but opened up standards to OGC and and BSI standards being involved in the story here. Uh, I, I don't think that we will ever get away from that and the, the list of standards will, will only keep growing. Uh, Esri a few years ago, uh, six years ago, introduced uh, our own standard for streaming large 3D content. Uh, that's something that has been moved into OGC as a community standard and uh, and we are uh, heavily invested in using it to help customers distribute extremely large data sets dynamically, uh, make them editable on the web and it covers uh, it covers point clouds, uh, uh, BIM data coming out of Revit and uh, and pretty soon IFC and and a lot more uh, large reality meshes and, and other kind of more 3D uh, GIS data types. Um, I can 
talk about that for a long time. I'll simply say that that I3S, which is the standards uh, kind of uh, acronym, uh, it it has no commercial dependencies. Anybody can use it. Um, it'll be improved by having more more partners and customers use it. Bentley, for example, uh, can ex export I3S from Context Capture, and um, and we have m many other partners and other ecosystem uh, collaborators who are using I3S already. Um, one key facet that is applicable here is that we created a, a, a spec within I3S specifically to accommodate uh, ingesting and then creating the streamable building models that are uh, usable in diverse GIS and, uh, and non-GIS experiences. So what you're seeing here on the right is actually a, uh, a a web scene that has a single layer that contains, I think the one of them contains 96 Revit models from Ohio State University that have been brought into a data model and then converted into uh, a, a building scene layer. And as you can see, I can explore it in uh, real world context. I It has uh, retained the semantics and uh, and metadata of the original model. It's not intended to be a replacement for the original source BIM data. Uh, I tell everybody that Esri is never going to store all 55 versions of every Revit file that that is in a in in a, you know in a single construction project. But what we do need to do is help our customers take appropriate data into GIS to be able to be used in asset management, other workflows where where they're not as worried about all of those versions of data that are over in a, in a BIM uh, repository, for example. Um, we have a workflow so that the the if if you ignore IFC for a moment, we've already built out a workflow to take Autodesk Revit files using the ODA uh, libraries and uh, bring them into ArcGIS Pro, one of our, our, our big desktop product, and then publish those as I3S building scene layers, both as big large packages that could actually be put on a mobile device or uh, or that can be uh, published to uh, either dynamically or, or statically to a, a hosted environment. And then, of course, consumed in end user applications for visualization analysis and exploration. Uh, we are planning to roll out IFC support in the next couple of months, also using the ODA libraries. And essentially, the way that we have accommodated Revit will directly accommodate IFC. Um, and um, if you guys have questions about that, we can talk about that in a sec. This is also our, our, our efforts around BIM and digital twins are also leading to ad additional product efforts that you'll start to see from us where we do message around digital twins and uh, and kind of BIM collaboration uh, from the the program management side, not the, the clash coordination side. Um, the GeoBIM is a product that we're coming out with this year that's been in development for a couple of years. It's starting out as a way to connect ArcGIS Online and Enterprise with uh, customers' uh, ACC instance, as well as other data that they have in, in their existing GIS. And then we're, we're looking already at additional third party uh, BIM cloud solutions. Uh, we've certainly talked about project wise and, and some other things, um, but it is it, this is aimed at more the program management uh, coordination side of the construction story, and we're getting a lot of demand for this from customers. This is yet another flavor of digital twin in another phase of the, the life cycle. Right? This could be used in all phases, but we're really seeing seeing a lot of demand for this in the the, the actual project life cycle of, of uh, where certain types of digital twins are relevant. Um, some customer examples that we talk about, uh, we have a product called RTS Urban for urban planning, but even before Urban was released, we've had customers using uh, GIS for urban planning for for decades and uh, and urban RTIS Urban is just a way to kind of realize that into a, a targeted experience for, for customers. But some of our customers think of these things as digital twins, and, and now I don't have any pictures of it, but they can also bring in reality capture and point cloud, you know, so reality mesh and point clouds and other data types. 
Um, I already mentioned this great HNTP example. On their own as a sales tool, they used our tech to create a, uh, a 5D construction visualization tool. Uh, and um, and uh, it's, it's really fantastic to see customers doing some of this work on their own. They talk about this as a, a version of a digital twin that's relevant for them. Um, uh, Hazen and Sawyer uh, are looking at uh, supporting a type of digital twin for uh, the water industry that is probably a lot closer to what uh, Casey was talking about in, in the sense that what they want to build is, and what they are already building is a kind of GIS 3D dashboard into the live state of water facilities and uh, and they are bringing together a whole bunch of data types underneath to do it. Some of the data stays resident in its its system of record, so it's not all sucked into GIS. And um, this is really just kind of a view on on the, that entire system. And there are other views on the system as well that are not uh, Esri. So that's it for me. Hopefully, I came in in time. I didn't hear anybody cut in. So um, so uh, I I'm open to a couple questions and. Uh, and those are a, we have a, a couple of blogs and other things out there that you could kind of dive in on a little deeper into our digital twin story.